respected audience assalamu alaikum i am professor shamsud jaman professor of pathology i welcome all in today's 46th lecture on pathology today day 12 of neoplasm day 12 of neoplasm dear audience today's topic is laboratory diagnosis of neoplasm laboratory diagnosis of neoplasm it includes laboratory diagnosis includes supportive investigation and investigations for tumor profile supportive investigations and investigations for tumor proper first come to supportive investigations the supportive investigations are hemoglobin estimation esr estimation occult blood test o b t dear students if anybody suffers from cancer usually he or she suffers from anemia so hemoglobin is reduced that is the patient is anemic why anemia in cancer bearing patient why anemia it may be due to blood loss and due to depression of the cancer bearing patient depression and depression is followed by anorexia due to anorexia there is anemia and strain so hemoglobin is reduced and the cancer bearing patient become anemic so reduction of hemoglobin does not say there is cancer rather anemia or reduction of hemoglobin supports or helps in diagnosis of cancer esr esr is usually high in cancer usually high dear days high is a does not say the patient is suffering from cancer rather it is supportive investigation occult blood test dear days colorectal carcinoma or carcinoma of the gi tract is one of the cause of positive occult blood test colorectal carcinoma or carcinoma of gastrointestinal tract is one of the cause of positive occult blood test 
So positive occult blood test does not say the patient is suffering from colorectal carcinoma, rather it is supportive investigation. Now come to investigation for tumor proper. Investigation for tumor purpose includes cytopathology, biopsy and histopathology, tumor marker, immunohistochemistry, Flow cytometry, DNA probe analysis, etc. So, investigation for tumor proper, cytopathology, biopsy and histopathology tumor marker, immunohistochemistry, flow cytometry, DNA probe analysis, etc. Dear audience, first come to cytopathology. We are talking about the investigations for the tumor proper. If anybody suffers from a cancer or tumor in the oral cavity, or in the female breast, or in the cervix of uterus, or in the GI tract, or in the lungs or liver. What investigations are done for that tumor proper? What investigations are done for that tumor proper? Dear audience, first come to cytopathology. We can study cell or cells of a tumor and by studying the cell or cells of a tumor we can say whether the tumor is benign or malignant. Again, studying of tumor cell we can say whether the tumor is benign or malignant. This is cytopathology. study of cells or cell, studying of cell or cells obtained, obtained from the tumor, we can say whether the tumor is benign or malignant. This is cytopathology. Again, studying of cell or cells obtained from the tumor, we can say whether the tumor is benign or malignant. This is cytopathology. Now come to different types of cytopathology. Different types of cytopathology. Aspiration. Cytopathology. This is FNAC. Fine needle aspiration cytopathology. This is FNC aspiration cytopathology, 
fine needle aspiration cytopathology. Abrasive cytopathology. Exfoliative cytopathology. Imprint cytopathology, brush cytopathology, crash cytopathology. These are the different types of cytopathology, aspiration cytopathology, abrasive cytopathology, exfoliative cytopathology, imprint cytopathology, brush cytopathology, crash cytopathology. There we now come to aspiration cytopathology. The aspiration cytopathology is FNAC, fine needle aspiration cytopathology. Now come to application of FNAC. That is sites of FNAC. Any abnormal palpable mass lymph adenopathy lump breast consolidation of lung a space occupying lesion, SOL, a space occupying lesion in liver, abdominal mass, prostate, etc. Gerodines for FNC of prostate. If this is done parietally, for FNC of abdominal mass, image guided FNC is done. For space occupying lesion in liver, image guided FNC is done. That is, ultrasound guided FNC is done. For consolidation of lung, image guided FNC, that is, CT guided FNC is done. Gerodens, now come to how FNC is done for the any palpable mass, for the thyroid swelling, for lymphadenopathy, for lump breast, etc. Now come to how FNC is done, how fine needle aspiration cytopathology is done for the palpable mass. Suppose this is female breast. And there is lamp breast. First, the area is washed with antiseptic. Washing of area with antiseptic. Then the mass is fixed by the fingers of the left hand. Fixation of the mass 
fixation of mass by fingers of left hand after fixation of the lamp by finger the fine needle is introduced in the mass suppose this is the needle and this is the syringe disposable syringe and this is the piston of the syringe like this first the needle is introduced in the mass after introduction of the needle within the mass the piston is pulled by the thumb if we pull the piston there will be negative pressure here if we pull the piston there will be negative pressure here and due to negative pressure here some cell will enter into the syringe from this mass again the area is first washed with antiseptics the mass is fixed with the fingers of the left hand then the needle is introduced within the mass after introduction of the needle the piston of the syringe is pulled by the finger of the right hand and there is negative pressure of the syringe and due to negative pressure some cells from the mass will enter into the syringe then the needle is withdrawn and the material or the cells that come from the lamp is taken in a slide if this is a slide the material or cells are taken in the slide clean slide then with another slide two slides are made after making two slides the slides are taken in fixed tips taken in fixed tip after fixation the slides are withdrawn and these are stained with paper nicolo stain after fixation after fixation smears are stained by paper nicolo stain after the staining the slide is seen under microscope if we see there is pleomorphism of the cells cells with large hyperchromatic nucleus altered nuclear cytoplasmic ratio prominent nucleoli these are the characteristics of anaplastic cell if we see such type of cell we can say this is a malignant tumor if we don't get such type of anaplastic cell we can say it is a benign tumor of the breast or if we see necrotic material and thickly populated pus cells we can say it is mastitis or breast abscess now come to abrasive cytopathology dear audience to know the cervical pathology to know the pathology of cervix of uterus the widely used abrasive cytopathology is pap smear pap smear for 
cervical pathology. And abrasive cytopathology also performed for any ulcer in the oral cavity or in the skin. Abrasive cytopathology for ulcer in oral cavity or in skin. There are days pap smear, papaniculo smear, according to name of scientist papaniculo. Papaniculo smear for cervical pathology is widely used abrasive cytopathology. And abrasive cytopathology is also done for ulcerations or ulcer in the oral cavity or ulcer in the skin. Now come to papaniculo smear, that is pap smear for cervical pathology. Derodens by pap smear or by papaniculo smear, we can identify cervical inflammation that is cervicitis. We can identify any metaplasia in the cervix. We can identify dysplastic changes and we can identify also cervical carcinoma by pap smear. Suppose this is the cervix of uterus. This is the vagina. Vaginal wall. And this is the ectocervix. And this is the endocervix. Dear audience, you know Scomo columnar junction of cervix of uterus is vulnerable, is very much vulnerable. For pap smear, cascus vaginal for self is used. At the same time, IR's spatula made of wood is used. IR's spatula. Is used. Dear audience, IR's spatula like this. Like this. Dear audience, the tip of the IR's spatula is introduced through the vagina in the cervix. If the tip is here, the tip is in the cervix. After introducing the IR's spatula, it is rotated at 360 degree. Rotated at 360 degree. After rotating at 360 degree, the IRS spatula is drawn. And the tip of the IRS spatula contains cervical cells, cells of the endocervix, cells of the ectocervix along with cervical mucus. Then this material is taken in slide and by another slide, two slides are made. Then it is fixed in fixative. After fixation, it is stained with papaniculo stain. After stilling the slide, it is seen under microscope 
if we see there is dysplastic change we can say that is a dysplastic change of the cervix if we say anaplastic cell with large hyperchromatic nucleus altered nucleus cytoplasmic ratio pleomorphism of cells we can say patient is suffering from cervical carcinoma this is the smear to know the pathology of the cervix it is one of the important abrasive cytopathology there remains suppose this is cervix of uterus and this is the ir spatula you introduce it and you rotate it at 360 degree then you withdraw it and there is material from the cervix then you put in the slide made two slides keep it in the fixative after fixation you stain with the perpendicular stain and see under microscope to identify the pathology of the cervix now come to exfoliative cytopathology Exfoliative cytopathology is done for ascitic fluid, pleural fluid, pericardial fluid, synovial fluid. cerebro spinal fluid urine sputum there audience if anybody suffers from intra abdominal malignancy due to intra abdominal malignancy there may be ascites and if there is ascites the malignant cells from the intra abdominal malignancy may exfoliate and come in the ascitic fluid and in the pleural fluid we can get malignant cell following malignant mesothelioma or following bronchogenic carcinoma or due to metastatic carcinoma in the pericardial fluid we can get malignant cell if there is pericardial effusion following metastasis in the urine we can get malignant cell if there is malignancy in the urinary bladder or in the ureter or in the kidney in this sputum we can get malignant cell that will exfoliate from the bronchogenic carcinoma so exfoliative cytopathology is done for acidic fluid pleural fluid pericardial fluid cerebral fluid csf urine sputum etc there are things how it is done the fluid is taken in container the fluid is then centrifuged then the sediment from the test tube is taken in a slide first centrifuge then sediment is taken in slide then two slides are made it is fixed in fixative then it is stained with paper nickel stain and it is seen under microscope if we get any cell there large hyperchromatic nucleus nucleus cytoplasm ratio altered prominent nuclei these are the features of anaplastic cell this is exfoliative cytopathology for sputum we take sputum we make slide 
we fix it. After fixation, we strain it with perpendicular strain in the cylinder microscope. If we get anaplastic cell, we can say patient may suffer from bronchogenic carcinoma. This is the exfoliative cytopathology. Now come to imprint cytopathology. For imprint cytopathology, a clean slide is touched with the freshly excised tissue from the neoplasm. Then the slide is fixed in fixative, laterally it is stained and seen under a microscope to identify any anaplastic cell. This is imprint cytopathology. Suppose this is freshly, freshly excised tissue from tumor. If it is freshly excised tissue from the tumor, we put a slide upon it and we touch the slide with this freshly excised tissue from the neoplasm and there will be cell from the tissue in the slide then it is fixed in fixative later on it is stained with perpendicular stain and it is seen under microscope if we see any anaplastic cell there we can say there is malignancy in this freshly excised tissue that is obtained from the tumor. This is imprint cytopathology. Now come to brush cytopathology. Diarodines, by using fine brush, we can take cells from any ulcer in the slide, then it is fixed in fixative, stained and seen under microscope to identify any anaplastic cell. This is brush cytopathology. Now come to crush cytopathology. There are days when the tissue is very much friable. In that case, crush cytopathology is used. Again, when the tissue is very much friable, in that case, crush cytopathology is used. Dear audience, this is all about the cytopathology for diagnosis of tumor. Briefly, now come to biopsy and histopathology. Dear audience, in case of cytopathology, there is a study of cell. In case of histopathology, there is a study of tissue. Now come to biopsy. Technique of collection of tissue. from the lesion for histopathology is known as biopsy. It is technique of collection of tissue from the lesion for histopathology is known as biopsy. There are many types of biopsy like incisional biopsy. In case of incisional biopsy, just incision is given and a piece of tissue from the lesion is taken. 
This is incisional biopsy. Excisional biopsy. In case of excisional biopsy, entire mass, entire abnormal mass is excised. This is excisional biopsy. Needle biopsy that is done for any space occupying lesion in the liver. Crooked biopsy, etc. These are the different types of biopsy. Dear audience, the tissue taken from the lesion is kept in fixative so that the cell architecture, so that the tissue architecture is maintained. Now come to fixatives. Fixatives used for biopsy material. What are the fixatives used for biopsy material? Widely used fixative is 10% formalin. 10% formalin. We know 40% formaldehyde is called formalin. We use the 10% formalin as fixative for the biopsy material and it is widely used fixative. It is a bit cheap. Ethyl alcohol chloroform etc. These are the fixatives used for biopsy material to maintain the cell architecture to maintain the tissue architecture. Dear audience, if we forget to keep the tissue in fixative, what will happen? There will be autolysis. There will be autolysis. Suppose this is biopsy material like this and if this is the container You have to keep fixative up to this. But if you give fixatives like this, the 50% of the biopsy material will be fixed there will be maintenance of the cell or tissue architecture and above it, the 50% will undergo autolysis. So, you have to give fixative like this. Dear audience, if we use the fixative, why there is no autolysis. Rather, if we forget to give fixative, the tissue undergo autolysis. Why? Why tissue architecture is maintained with fixatives? What is the role of fixative so that the tissue architecture or cellular architecture is maintained? Dear audience, you know if this is the cell, this is the nucleus, the cell organelles, lysosomal bags, and there are some somatic enzymes. If we use fixative, all the enzymes of the cell will be inactivated. 
as the enzymes are inactivated, so cells are not autolyzed. If we don't use fugitive, due to cellular hypoxia, the enzymes will be activated. And due to activation of the different enzymes of the cell, cell undergo autolysis. But if we use the fugitive, all the enzymes become inactivated and so there will be no autolysis. This is the role of fugitive to maintain the cellular and tissue architecture. Dear audience, today I have told you about the supportive investigations for diagnosis of tumor in laboratory and I have told you investigations for the tumor proper to diagnose tumor in laboratory. Among these, I have told you cytopathology, that is aspiration cytopathology, that is FNAC, fine needle aspiration cytopathology. Uh, it is used in different sites like any abnormal palpable mass, lumb breast, lymph adenopathy, space occupying lesion of the liver, consolidation of the lung, etc. I have told you about the abrasive cytopathology, widely used abrasive cytopathology is pap smear to know the pathology of cervix. It is also used for any ulcer in the oral cavity or in the skin. I have told you about the exfoliative cytopathology for the body fluids where the malignant cells are exfoliated and we can identify by such type of cytopathology. I have told you about the imprint cytopathology and lastly I have told you about biopsy and histopathology briefly to adapt to this. Thanks all.